The Master Keys series of mechanical keyboards from Cooler Master features genuine Cherry MX switches and the flexibility of choice. Whether you want small, medium, or large, you can pick your size and pick your color with RGB and clear white LED backlighting options. Click the sponsor link in the description for more information. Excellent! Well, it's been a while since I had the opportunity to test a completely new computing platform, so I had to make some tough decisions when it came to my Ryzen benchmarks. In total, I had about three days to test uh, this CPU since this past week was kind of bookended by trips to San Francisco that I made, and I wanted to show a range of comparison systems against the new $500 AMD Ryzen 7 1800X. I do also have the 1700 and 1700X, but they arrived later in the week, so I'll be testing them in a follow-up video. Now, if you didn't already know, the 1800X is AMD's flagship 14 nanometer, eight core CPU with 16 threads via simultaneous multi-threading, 20 megs of cache and 24 PCI Express Gen 3 lanes, has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a turbo of four gigahertz, although mine ran, mine ran just a little bit faster than that uh, out of the box with my Gigabyte Aorus AX3 70 Gaming 5 motherboard. Ryzen CPUs will fit in new socket AM4 motherboards with a variety of chipset options with X370 and B350 chipset variants providing overclocking support since all Ryzen CPUs are multiplier unlocked for overclocking. I want to focus this video on the benchmarks rather than the specs that you guys probably already know though. So here's a rundown of my three comparison systems that I will be testing the 1800X against. So my Ryzen testbed features the R7 1800X of course, the Noctua NHU12S Special Edition Cooler, 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX memory running at 2933 MHz, a Gigabyte Aorus AX370 Gaming 5 motherboard, and the GTX 1080 Founders Edition graphics card from Nvidia. To keep things fair, I used 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 2933 in all the test beds except for the AM3 Plus one, and for the CPU frequency, I ran a slight 100 megahertz overclock, which was actually how the Gigabyte board ran the R7-1800X out of the box. That or it was Ryzen's extended frequency range feature kicking in, but I was not running with the system in Windows 10 high performance mode, so I don't believe that was enabled. Anyway, the 1800X ran at 4.1 GHz on one or two cores and 3.7 GHz on all cores. My FX8350 system, as shown in my build video for it, features an FX8350 8-core CPU running at 4.2 GHz boost with a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO cooler, 16 gigs of DDR3 2400 memory from G-Skill, an ASUS Sabertooth 990FX 2.0 motherboard, and also used the Founders Edition GTX 1080. My 7700K system is none other than the classy RGB build, so I'll link that video if you want a full parts list and the build itself. It's got an NZXT Kraken X62 cooler, ASUS Maximus 9 Hero motherboard, 16 gigs of G-Skill DDR4, again at 2933. Uh, I did remove two of the sticks that you can see shown here um, when I was doing the testing, and an ASUS Strix GTX 1080 that I underclocked to match the Founders Edition GPU frequency. The CPU was again overclocked by 100 MHz, running at 4.5 GHz boost. And finally, the X99 system with the 6850K was also featured in a previous build video, which I will link to, but it has a Corsair H100 IV2 CPU cooler, Asus X99 Deluxe 2 motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR4, and a quad channel configuration this time, 4x4 gigs, but also running at 2933, and an EVGA GTX 1080 for the win that was also underclocked to match the Founders Edition frequency. The 6850K was also given that 100 MHz OC bump as well, running at 3.9 GHz turbo up from its 3.8 stock frequency. Of course, I welcome your feedback about my CPU clock speed decisions as well down in the comments, but for now, let's dive into the benchmarks. We'll start with Cinebench, of course. This is R15 tested with multi-thread mode as well as single thread mode and the 1800X as shown in the preview benchmarks by AMD cleaning up here with a multi-thread score of 1584. Of course, thanks to it having 16 threads compared to the 6850K that has 12, 7700K that has eight, FX8350 that has eight. Uh, really, really nice boost from the old performance of the FX8350 here. Although when you switch over to single thread, you do see that Intel does still have the single thread instructions per clock performance boost, at least with the 7700K and the Skylake architecture. 6850K with Broadwell E uh, is coming in just behind, but we will see that change uh, with further tests. Next is CPU mark. Overall score here again sees the 1800X cleaning up with a score of 15,663. 
6850K coming in second, 7700K coming in third, and that FX8350 barely able to get close, well, couldn't quite break 10K. Uh, but then of course the single thread scores once again tell us a story that the instructions per clock performance of the Intel CPUs is still outpacing uh, what we have with Ryzen 7. So single thread score of 2065, not quite keeping up with the 6850K and definitely lagging behind the 7700K with its score of 2647. Next up we have Blender, and this was just doing the Splash Fishy Cat render, which is available for download from the Blender website. Uh, pretty quick render here, but we can see that the 1800X with all of its cores and all of its threads uh, did a pretty damn good job here, coming in with a score of about 36 seconds, just over that. Uh, that is less than half of what the FX8350 got. So again, showing where we have come in the past five years when you compare it to the old excavator uh, CPU. Next up, let's look at Handbrake. I was using it to re-encode one of my 4K videos. It's about a four gig file, about 12 to 13 minute long video. Uh, encoding it down to 1080 from 4K, and here the 1800X wins again with a score of 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Lower is better here, of course. Uh, and again, uh, just about half of the score of the FX8350, so impressive there. And also nice to see it again uh, outperforming the 6850K and the 7700K. Again, I think uh, thanks to all of the cores and threads available. Adobe Premiere Pro CC, uh, this was again a 4K video render, one of my own video projects. Uh, coming in a very, very tight race here between the 1800X and the 6850K, I will say. That's a difference of just one second, but the 1800X did win one, once again, uh, coming in a couple minutes ahead of the 7700K, and again, just destroying the FX8350 as it should. And in case you're wondering, this is about a 13 minute long project being rendered to 4K 30 FPS with uh, 40 megabits per second uh, bit rate. Next up, let's switch over into gaming benchmarks. And here is where I want you guys to pay close attention because gaming is important. And a lot of you, I think, are concerned about gaming performance with Ryzen. Let's jump right into it with uh, synthetics. We have a 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra score. Overall, 5,499 for the uh, 1800X. That's largely in uh, thanks, I think, to the physics score of 18,857. Just, just blowing it out of the water once again with all of those cores and threads. Uh, 17,000 was what the 6850K was able to muster. 14,000 was what the 7700K uh, was able to put out. Um, but bear in mind, this is a synthetic test. Uh, we also have 3D Mark Time Spy, which is a DirectX 12 test. Again, the 1800X wins with a score of 7,572 overall. Uh, and again, I think that's largely in part to the CPU score uh, of 7,543, uh, which is a good thousand points more than what the uh, 6850K was able to achieve. When we jump over to real world tests though, the story does change. And I apologize, I had a limited amount of time to run gaming tests. So I only have two games that I ran, GTA 5 and Civ 6. But GTA 5, just look at the numbers here compared to 4K and 1080. Now 4K we see pretty similar numbers across the board, even the 8350. Um, and that is because at 4K, we're seeing more of a GPU bottleneck than a CPU bottleneck. The GPU isn't outputting as many frames, so it's not giving the CPU enough to work with. However, when we jump to 1080, we see that the Intel platforms are able to get the 1080 GTX 1080 graphics card to output about 140 frames per second. But the 1800X is about 15% slower, 118 frames per second. And this was repeatable. Um, this isn't just a fluke benchmark. Of course, the 8350 uh, showing that it's really, really not up to the task of keeping up with the modern GTX 1080, only outputting about 90 frames per second. But yeah, that 1800X performance is a bit of a concern. Let's move to Civ 6, and this is in DirectX 12 mode, and this is a bit more of a CPU uh, intensive game, depending on what test you're running, of course. At 4K, the graphics score was 64.5 frames per second for the 1800X, again, coming in shy of what the 6850 and the 7700K were able to produce, getting 68 uh, FPS and 71 FPS, respectively. Not quite as big of a gap as we saw with GTA 5, but still, the 1800X lagging behind in game performance. 99th percentile, I'm going to be trying to include these scores as much as possible for the uh, for the future. But here again, we saw not as good a performance. This is the 1% uh, of slowest frames and what their average frame rate was. And uh, we saw 51 uh, FPS for the 1800X, whereas the other two Intel platforms hit 54 and 56 frames per second. When we jump over to 1080 with Civ 6, we see that gap 
uh, widen even a little bit more with the 1800X hitting 69 frames per second, uh, whereas the 6850 and 7700K hit 85 and 78. Uh, of course, still doing great compared to the 8350, but I think you guys are more concerned about uh, how it performs against modern Intel CPUs in this respect. 99th percentile uh, did a little bit better with the 1800X hitting 49.8, which did outperform the 6850. And then average turn time, which is uh, more of a CPU-based test, but I think here still the instructions per clock won out, as we saw the 7700K uh, outperforming, uh, hitting 18.7 seconds average turn time, whereas the 1800X only hit 22.2. Now I do want to briefly now touch on temperatures and power draw, but please take my numbers with a big old grain of salt. Simply put, my measurement methodology was a bit shaky uh, because most of the temperature monitoring software that we rely on isn't fully functional with Ryzen yet. It's not reporting proper numbers. Ida64, for example, is just completely wrong. Uh, so my power draw numbers as well, also a little bit shaky since they're relying on instantaneous and peak measurements from my kilowatt power strip, uh, and I'm going to be improving my power draw uh, technology here soon as well. But that said, my motherboard thermal sensor that I am 90% sure is reading from the CPU socket pegged the 1800X's load temps at about 65 to 75 degrees Celsius under full load across all cores, and that is with the ambient being about 19 to 20 degrees Celsius here in my garage. As for power draw, I saw sub 300 watt peak power draw across all tests with my Ryzen platform. That's pretty nice. It only hit 291 watts max, which is pretty good. Still about 20 to 30 watts more than the 7700K base system, but AMD in their documentation wasn't really claiming that it's uh, gonna outperform the 7700K, more that they're bringing the performance per watt back up in line with what Intel currently has. Uh, and I'd say for an eight core 16 thread system, uh, that's a pretty good result when it comes to power draw. But now it is conclusion time and it's a little complicated. On paper and in practice, the raw power of 16 threads is undeniable for workstation tasks, for video editing, and for transcoding. And I'm very glad that I have the FX8350 benchmarks from that system back there, so we can see just how far AMD has come in the past five years or so. IPC improvements have closed the performance gap with Intel, or at least narrowed it to a much, much smaller margin in such a way that it's easy to say that AMD has created a powerful and much more affordable consumer solution for home and professional desktop use. Those gaming results are hard to swallow though, and even though I only ran a couple gaming tests, I have been in touch with Steve from Gamers Nexus, who verified that they saw gaming FPS numbers lagging behind Intel's current CPUs in a similar fashion across the titles that they tested. It's a frustrating result that really puts the brakes on wholeheartedly recommending the 1800X for anyone who is purely building a system for PC gaming. Why the gaming numbers are suffering with Ryzen is still not wholly known, but it's clear that single thread performance is still king when it comes to gaming, and decisions made by AMD at the microarchitecture level could be limiting performance with certain instruction sets. For more in-depth discussion though, I highly encourage you to check out the Gamers Nexus coverage of the Ryzen launch, because Steve had some very insightful thoughts on this topic. While you're at it, uh, look all over the internet for lots of coverage on Ryzen because Lord knows there's tons and tons of places where AMD was sending these processors out. I am going to spend a little bit of time this morning to look at some articles, find the good ones, and I'll post links to those down in the description. So there you have it guys, an exciting launch to be sure, but definitely tempered somewhat by the less than stellar gaming performance. I have a feeling that the less expensive Ryzen CPUs like the 1700 will provide a better price to performance for a gaming build, and as the dust settles from this launch and more outlets publish their numbers, I think things will become more clear, especially when testing across a wide range of different gaming titles. In the meantime, here's one more, more reminder that the 1700 and 1700X have showed up, and though I did not have time to cover them today, I will be working on that like immediately. Uh, I'm also gonna be doing some overclocking, of course, as well. So hit that like button, uh, share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more videos just like it, check that description once again for links to other reviews that I think are good, and as always, thank you for watching.